why do we create content about multiple sclerosis? Why do we do YouTube videos and blogs and podcasts and write newsletters? There's a lot of us out there. There's tons of great content on living with MS. I've been thinking about this a lot recently, and I wanted to share my thoughts with you. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. I'm glad you're here. My channel has really started to grow recently. Thank you, my dear viewers. And as it's grown, so have the comments and the feedback I receive. Some of it is um, challenging. I have some comments that tell me I'm flat out wrong. Despite the fact that I log long hours researching each video, and I liberally splash the videos with screenshots from the research, I quote directly from the research, and I always place links to the research in the description of the videos. Oh, and as a reminder, on my channel, I share my thoughts on living with MS. This does not mean that my thoughts are medical advice, and it also does not mean that my thoughts are necessarily going to agree with your thoughts. It just means that I'm thoughtful. It's okay to get challenging comments. I don't mind being challenged in this way. If someone disagrees with me, I'm more than happy to look at any research they'd like to provide that contradicts what I've presented. I try to keep an open mind, I think, and I love to see new research on MS. But honestly, the challenging commenters, they rarely share research, even when I ask for it. It seems they just want to tell me that I'm wrong. Some comments, though, ooh, they can be mean. I try to just delete those comments and move on, but sometimes, just sometimes, what they say can really sting. I had one recently on this video that's about my diagnosis story. In it, I shared that I had to see a number of doctors over the course of a year before getting to my diagnosis. I also shared that I had a little voice in the back of my head that was saying it was MS all along. My intuition was nudging me. The person that commented on the video accused me of doctor shopping until I got the diagnosis I wanted. That I kept going to doctors until I got one that would say, yes, I had MS, because that's what I wanted. Wow, that caught me off guard. Did they really think I was hoping to be diagnosed with a progressive, degenerative, incurable disease? No one. No one wants to be diagnosed with an incurable disease. I was seeking answers as to why I was having all these symptoms. I kept going to doctors asking for their opinions and asking for their help. I didn't walk in and say, hey, I think I have MS. Do you agree with me? It can be easy to fall into the trap of focusing on the negative. It seems like we're bombarded with it everywhere, in the news and on social media and sometimes in my comments. I try to respond to the challenging posts and negative Nellies with compassion, kindness, and curiosity. I will ask for clarification and more information. And the mean posts? I'm going to try to make a better effort to just delete those and move on. It really doesn't help me to engage with them, and more often than not, it brings me down. Who has time for that? So back to the question. Why do we create content? I think there's a number of reasons why we do it. We do it to share our experiences. We're all in this special club and sharing our stories, and our stories help. We do it to help others. When I was first diagnosed, I was seeking information. I liked hearing from other MSers to get a firsthand account of what worked for them and what their experiences were. We also do it to build community. They say that birds of a feather flock together. We're all part of this crazy flock of MS birds. Personally, why do I do this? When I was first diagnosed, I went to the Google to search for information about MS because I was newly diagnosed and I didn't know diddly about MS. And up popped a video entitled, My MS Story. And I went, oh, I want to hear their MS story. I wonder if it's anything like what I went through. And then the algorithm served up another My MS Story. And then another and then another. And you know what? Hearing all those stories made me feel less alone and less fearful. Some of the stories were from people who were years and years into their journeys with MS, and they were doing okay. So 
That's one of the reasons I do this, to share my story. I also want to help people and let them know that there's so much we can do, so much that we do have control over that can help us to live well with our MS. We live in such an amazing time. There are over 20 different medications out there to help slow the progression of MS. The first medications came out in 1993. That was just over 30 years ago. And new medications are being worked on and released all the time. Technology is changing all the time, too. There are some very cool advances being made, like the Zine, the Psionic Neural Sleeve, and have you seen Honda's new hands-free wheelchair? It is super cool. We can also help our bodies to be healthier. We can do things to reduce our symptoms and possibly reduce progression. I want to share with you all what I've learned over the years about diet and exercise and sleep and mindfulness that could help us. There's a lot of research out there showing that what we eat and how we live has a huge effect on our health, our symptoms, and possibly progression. I do this because I want to offer hope and inspiration. You are my community, and I really enjoy watching it grow. I oftentimes start my videos with a welcome that includes, I'm glad you're here. I really am. Thanks for being part of my community. If you haven't subscribed yet to my channel or my newsletter, I invite you to do so using the subscribe button and the link to my newsletter in the description. I went back and I looked at the comments, messages, and emails from you, my dear friends. You know, the ones that enjoy the videos. I love getting feedback on my videos and I love reading comments. Have you commented on any of my videos? Please leave me a note. I try to respond to each of them or give them a heart. Why do I do this? Here are just some of the reasons why. You are an inspiration to anyone living with MS. Your calm and loving nature is truly beautiful. Thank you so much. Your video is helping me to clarify where I am on this journey. Blessings to you and thank you for making the video. You are helping many people. I still find your videos so helpful, positive, and supportive. I love how encouraging you are and taking as much of your health into your own hands by nutrition and wellness to make the symptoms as manageable as possible. Thank you a million times. I hope you keep doing what you are doing. Great video, Vicki. You are so positive and loving in sharing your story and how you've learned to live your best life with MS. Thank you so much. Hearing you talk about MS has been a huge help in accepting and making eating lifestyle changes to address this issue. Watching your videos and reading the comments helped me to realize I'm not alone on this journey. I look forward to Sunday mornings and have benefited greatly from all your nutrition and lifestyle information. You've changed my lifestyle immeasurably and I'm now eating a clean, whole food, plant-based diet. I appreciate you more than I can say. I appreciate you, my dear viewers, more than I can say. I'm so glad you're part of this community. If I had to summarize why I make content about living with MS in one sentence, it would be this. I do this to help people.